So a quick disclaimer before we jump into the video. Everything that follows is just my opinion, guys. Now I am going to make a number of objective claims in this video, but see what I'm doing now is I'm framing them all as my opinion so that you can't criticize me or say that I'm wrong. Okay, so remember that. This is just my opinion, and you're not allowed to criticize me. Okay? Are we clear? All right, let's jump into the video. That new movie you criticize is actually genius, and you're a bad person if you don't like it. And also, that old movie that you really like is problematic, and you're a bad person if you still like it. So I've noticed a lot of people online, especially straight white men, seem to be really mad about this new movie. So they're spewing their toxic hate, claiming that their opinions are objective and anyone, anyone who likes the movie is wrong. Now I could spend time talking about the legitimate flaws and things that the movie doesn't do as well as it could, but honestly, no movie is perfect, except for Sorry to Bother You, because capitalism is evil. <laughs> But really, I don't want to give in to this idea that pop culture blockbusters are even to be taken seriously in the first place. Unless, of course, you really love them, in which case they absolutely should be taken seriously. And furthermore, there is no such thing as objectivity in art. There are only better and worse subjective opinions. Duh. Now to talk about how great this movie is, I might have to get into spoiler territory, so here's your warning. If you don't want to hear me recap the entire plot in a boring and uninteresting manner, then skip to this timecode. So the movie starts with this, and then this thing happens, and this person says, oh my god, that's crazy, and then this other thing happens, and they're like, oh, oh my goodness, and then this other thing happens, and then she doesn't like that, so she says, hey, you stop that, and then this other thing happens, and it gets even crazier from there, and then the, then the evil person's like, I'm gonna get you, I'm a fascist, and I'm like, oh my god, this fascist, gotta resist, hashtag resist, and then the next thing happens, and then the movie's over. Now, a lot of haters in the toxic fan base of this intellectual property have said that politics is ruining this franchise. What I say to that is boo-hoo-hoo. And besides, everything is political. Therefore, a good film is a film with good politics. See, these new movies have the right politics. The old movies, uh, let's just say they were a product of their time. But also, you're not allowed to like them anymore because times have changed. And if you still like something that was a product of its time, that means you're evil. Now, another thing these so-called critics won't stop harping about is the plot. They say the plot makes no sense. And to that I say, <laughs> And there you go. Argument one. But really, like any sane person, I'm willing to forgive little tiny holes in the plot because what really makes a movie is themes. Now, as anyone who actually studied the art of cinema and filmmaking knows, like me, by the way, good themes make good art, regardless of how they're executed. See, this movie has really strong themes of hope and despair, success and failure, life and Death. Now I'm going to quote an intellectual, whether or not it's relevant to the topic at hand, to show that my film studies degree wasn't a waste of time. <clears throat> As the analytical psychologist Eric Neumann once wrote, all the objects of the outside and inside worlds are introjected as contents of consciousness and are there represented according to their value. The selection, arrangement, gradation, and elimination of the contents so represented depend in large measure on the cultural canon within which consciousness develops and by which it is conditioned. But it is characteristic of every individual under all circumstances, to create for himself a consciously constellated and synthetically constructed view of the world, however great or small in scope. See, a, a smart person said that, and I quoted them, so I am also smart by association. Now, there is one last thing I should probably mention about criticisms of this movie, and that's the character of Blank. A lot of people think Blank is a poorly written, unlikable, nothing of a character. 
and that's just wrong. I'm not gonna explain why that's wrong, it just is. But more importantly, they criticize her for having no flaws and no obstacles to overcome. I don't buy the Mary Sue thing anyway. I found the, I find the term sexist. You go, girl. Now, a lot of morally good people try to defend her, saying that no, she does have flaws and obstacles to overcome. But I'm gonna take kind of a bold stance here and say that it's good that she doesn't have any flaws or obstacles to overcome. You see, blank is a insert minority group character. And if we said that insert minority group characters had flaws, then we'd be saying that insert minority group were flawed. And that would be bigoted. I, for one, think it's good that she has no flaws to overcome. Because it's showing this insert minority group community that they're perfect just the way they are. And on that note, that's all I have for you in this video. I'd like to thank my mega sexy patrons for supporting me, and I'd also like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a blah 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 blah. If you like this video, please mail pallets of cash directly to my house. Anyway, that's all I have for you today, fam. Thanks for watching. And always remember everything is objectively subjective, so you're not allowed to criticize me.